Okay, so as you can see here, I have a piece of honeycomb calcite, and the bottom is drilled for a light. Okay, so then I have taken the very front, or what I'm going to call the front, and I have put my design in just barely with a very small burr. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to go and I'm going to... Um, just make the details pop here and then once I'm done with that we'll go to polishing. I kind of thought you would like to see a little bit of the process so this is the bigger drill bit that I'm using to go around just the major items uh, that I have on here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my bit out and go for the smaller one and just make these a little more deeper. Um, they don't have to be that deep when you're going to paint, probably just um, as maybe a little bit less than the actual bit that I have here. So it's just enough to lay that acrylic paint down inside the lines. Um, so after I am done um, engraving these just a little bit deeper, I will wash it off real good, give it a scrub down. And then I will um, take this out to my shop and I will um, use my flat lap and I'll just take the edge of these corners right off because they do fracture and break. Um, I don't know if you can see how uneven this is. So I'll just um, kind of just go over it just a little, just a little bit. Um, I don't have to worry about the inside of this, but this will get polished on the inside uh, with the acid. Um, I'll just use regular Lysol bowl toilet cleaner because it does have uh, strong enough muriatic acid that um, within five minutes I can have this polished up nicely. And the, the blessing with that is you can paint it on. It's, um, it's thicker, so it's just the stuff that you use on your toilet. Um, and so when I go polish this, it will... Um, it'll look just like it was wet. So this piece has really excellent color color to it. So, okay, I'm just gonna stop here for a second. Okay, so I want you to be able to see kind of what I'm doing. And since I am working inside, you can see that I do have a little bit of dust Look at that. This is just a bottle of water. So I only really need the water, you know, where I'm carving. And it evaporates pretty quickly in here. You know, it's a pretty warm house. And the stone is very porous, so it will, um, it'll just come right off. I don't need a lot of water, it just needs to be damp. And I'm not doing a lot of carving, so I did switch out the tip for a very tiny one. You can hear that it's not too loud. So one of the great things that, you know, when you're carving, you make a mistake. The great thing is nobody else is going to know, just you. So there's plenty of things you can do if you make a mistake. Um, you can use different bits to try to fix it, or you can just leave it. That's what I've been doing.
see that I'm moving the stone and not me. Samson, stop. Sorry, guys. So I'm just using a very light touch. I don't want to apply a bunch of pressure because this calcite does have differing hardnesses depending on if I'm in the orange, which is really just hard for calcite, or if I'm in the wider regions, which is a less dense calcite. And you can see I'm just rubbing over it so that it fills in where I have carved with the uh, slurry. And I'm not too worried about the powder. It's not going anywhere. So you can see I'm just going to put just a little bit more water on here. I put maybe a tablespoon now on top. And then I will uh, come back when I'm done with this part. Okay, so now you can see that it is all carved out for what I am doing. The next step is to smooth the edges over and then give it a good scrub. Okay, so now you can see that it's done. It's been scrubbed out. And uh, the next step is going to be polishing. I took it out to my flat lap and just rounded the corners on all four sides. And then um, on the bottom edges, just to avoid it. Um, cracking more and chipping away more. Okay, next step, polishing. Okay, so the next step is to polish this. Now, when you polish this, these grains from getting cut, um, they're not gonna disappear and it's not going to be absolutely smooth. Um, unless you go in and you're able to, um, you know, take, take that down, you can knock it down even with a little bit of wet sandpaper by hand. 
It, it just takes a few minutes, but I'm not really going to worry about it. I think it's going to add some character. And uh, so the product that I'm using, I just used this one. Um, this one does have plenty of the chemical in it that I need to use. And then um, I want you to see this is very nice sparkly, hasn't been touched with the acid. So I'm going to put it on and protect it from the acid. So it is in a little tub and I'm just in my little office room. I'll take it into the bathroom and rinse it when I'm finished. Um, so the acid in here is very mild. It's muriatic acid and it will um, be just fine. Uh, there's a little bit of this here. I'm just not going to worry about that. If it gets touched with it, uh, it is whatever. Um, but I do want to make sure that I get the inside polished. So you see, I just filled that in and I'm going to roll it around. If it gets on the bottom, that's fine. Right over the tub. And then I'm just gonna set it down in that. I don't know if you can see. So the whole bottom is being polished while we're talking. You can see the foam. That foam just means it's working. So with this being in a gel form, it makes it a lot easier to make sure. I am doing the front first because I want the front to have the most polish. This is very easy to do it this way. Um, as the acid is neutralized by the calcite, it will quit working. Sometimes, you know, you have to apply a couple layers of it, but we probably shouldn't have to do that here. You can see I'm just following along the edge and you can open up the nozzle as wide or as skinny as you want to get the desired results that you want. You can see it is just foaming a lot and that's good that is the reaction we want now if you were to do this with straight muriatic acid or even just you know the acid in um, in water you don't have the gel in it so it doesn't stick so you wouldn't be able to do this technique So I'm only going to go over the front section multiple times. I don't need to do that in the other sections because there's really nothing uh, inscribed there or painted on there. Okay, so I'm just going to let this sit for about five minutes. You can see how it's already worked pretty well on this side and this side as well. And I've done a pretty darn good job of not letting that touch. And it, I think, I think that side looks really good, but I'm going to go over it one more time. And then when you're done doing this, uh, to neutralize it, if you don't feel like running water over it, is going to neutralize it enough for you, then you can put it in a bath of a 50-50 mixture of, oh, that's, that's really pretty, that color, oh, that looks so good. Anyways, a 50-50 mixture of baking soda.
and we'll do the front side one more time. Oh, God, just, ah, I'm getting old, like really bad here. I got a little bit on the white. It shouldn't affect it too badly. And then when I'm all done, this stuff that's at the bottom here, I'll just go ahead and clean my toilets um, with that. It's fine. And we'll let that just come off the back there. And see, it's putting a really nice polish on there. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is just a piece of stone so that you could kind of get an idea of the before. Okay, and then this is the after. I'll show you the front. As soon as I get these little rubber guys put on it and the light inserted, I don't know if I showed you the light. So this is just um, a catch light. You stick up in the hole and then it's got like the on off over there. Okay. Okay guys, it is all finished and I think it looks pretty fantastic. That's what the rough looked like before. And now the magic. Oh, so pretty. So you can do just about any design on this. Um, so you can see that I put these rubber gaps, these taller rubber gap things on there just because um, I didn't get a, like a notch out in the back for the wire to go through. But that makes sense.